Hey, good morning, friends. Today is Thursday, September the 12th, 2024, and the time now is 7.27 a.m. In the United States, politicians, especially during election time or election times, as it is the case every time, you will rather hear them try to talk tough about being the person who loved the authorities, who liked the police, who support the police, who is tough on crimes. Or you will hear them talk geopolitics, basically trying to defame or criticize or just talk smack about one country or one leader. In this case, they often talk about countries such as China, Iran, Russia, and so on, and African countries and basically countries throughout the world and the global south, most especially. This government or this country want to destroy the United States. This government or this country or this leader hates the United States. They hate the United States because the United States love freedom or whatever nonsense. And in fact, that is the, the word or phrase, okay? Cliche, often used. They hate us because we love freedom. And the way American leaders talk about freedom it is so confusing that it makes one ask, who the hell is freedom? What is freedom? Does freedom have children? Is freedom married? Does freedom have a job? Basically, the whole idea of freedom, the concept of freedom, when you hear American leaders talk about it, freedom is personified. Freedom takes the, the image. Freedom takes the reputation, the characteristics of a human, just like guns itself. I did make a program about two or three days ago where I say that in the United States, it is as if guns have become humans. Guns have taken the characteristics of humans. I made a program where I basically talk about an experience that I had while on the train, okay, traveling to meet a friend, to hang out, to spend a Friday evening, where whether it is because I had seen this image before or it was just uh, popping in my, my vision because I was thinking about the recent murder okay, that occurred in Georgia, basically at the Appalachian High School, where a young man, age 14, by the name of Colt Gray, basically opened fire several times on his peers and teachers, killing four people, two teachers and two uh, students, and wounding about nine of them so when i was on the train going to meet my friend i had this image in my uh, vision of a young kid a little child on the ground in a pool of blood and right next to her about like seven feet or so there was a gun uh laying down and a middle-aged man came in rushed to pick up the guns basically this guy left a young a uh, child dying or had died, but he went to save the gun. It is how Americans talk about gun or guns in the United States. Therefore, to me, it seems as if once again, the guns have taken the characteristics or the personality of the human beings. And so Americans are saving guns while people are dying. But anyway, in the United States, when you hear politicians talk, especially in uh, election time, during election season. This leader, this country, this government hates us. They want to destroy us. However, I am going to say here that if the United States is destroyed, the destruction of the United States is going to come from the United States. It's going to be as a result of an activity or an action by an American person. Whether we are talking about the American uh, people or the American government or an American leader. It is uh, just dangerous, okay? Americans are their greatest enemies. The United States is its own enemy. One American uh, president state that the United States has nothing to fear but fear itself. Basically, afraid of being afraid. But I am going to say that the United States has something to fear. is itself. The United States must fear itself or perhaps i should say it this way the united states should fear herself 
Now, I do apologize for deviating, okay? I just wanted to set the stage for what I'm going to talk about briefly. Basically, the debate, the presidential debate between Kamala Harris, who is now the vice president of the United States, and Donald Trump, the former president of the United States. And I am going to say right now that the debate, what happened in the debate, it's evident that the United States is in a terrible time. And that Donald Trump, his behavior and his personality and the way he does politics is going to impact the United States in the long term, far into the future. And that it is going to have a dangerous consequence or consequences. Now, I want to thank you for being a member of the Echoing Voice community. And I want to thank you, my friends, for watching the Echoing Voice. If you haven't done so, please press the button, subscribe to this channel. Please, my friends, also share this video and the link of this video and the link of the channel to your friends and to your family. And let's all become part of the solution. Join the conversation. Thank you very much. So, my friends, now you are watching the playlist series, Trends and Headlines in U.S. Society and Domestic Politics. Once again, you are watching the playlist series, Trends and Headlines in U.S. Society and Domestic Politics. I am going to talk briefly about some of the pointers that I noticed as I watched the presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Of course, as of now, it is known that Kamala Harris, uh, her campaign, did request a second presidential debate with Donald Trump. Now, in terms of uh, the debate itself, one thing that stands out among many was that Kamala Harris did set the stage when she said to the audience that Trump is going to be lying and that they should watch out for all the lies that he's going to be uh, spewing. And it is very interesting that by her setting the stage, I think it was a strategy to basically have the audience not only focus on what Trump is saying, but focus on what could be the lie. Now, in terms of the, the debate itself, it seems to an extent Kamala Harris was the only one talking about her plans or talking about policy, even though she talked about policy in a limited way, while Donald Trump said nothing about policy. What Donald Trump did basically was just throw tantrum and basically attack. To an extent, if you watch the debate, you probably will get tired about the fact that he kept on going at Joe Biden to the point where many times Kamala Harris did state it to him that you are no longer running against uh, Joe Biden. You are running against me now. I think that basically confirmed what many observers have been saying that Donald Trump had prepared his campaign had prepared to go after Joe Biden. They were never expecting Joe Biden to drop and Kamala Harris to become the nominee. So they had focused all their energy at going at uh, Joe Biden or against Joe Biden. Now they have to make up new materials. But another thing that I find to be very interesting is that something which work or seem to have worked in Trump's favor because the host basically kept fact checking him they kept asking him question probing and trying to make correction which to an extent if you look at it from a trump perspective or from a republican slash maga perspective it made trump look strong and it made it look as if the media was going at trump it made trump from a maga and republican perspective to look like a hero and also there are those who basically had been critical of the host, okay, both the host. Now, I think the criticism of the host, to a greater extent, is unnecessary and it's unfair because I think what they tried to do was to hold Trump accountable, which they did to an extent. If you look at all the debates that Donald Trump had engaged or participated in, the host had never challenged him. Donald Trump had basically said whatever he wanted and had not been challenged. Basically say nonsense, get away with it, 
look good in front of his or to his uh, supporters and basically just spill lies. So I think that's what the hosts were trying to do. And I will give them regards, high regards for that, because I think the future of America or the United States, whether we are talking about society or political uh, system, is dependent on or upon Americans sensitizing the political system or the social uh, system, society at large. Because honestly, what Donald Trump is doing, his personality, his persona, his way of debating, his activity, is going to have a long-term impact on American politics and in American society. Because honestly, he had done continuously what many Republicans will either do at a limited uh, manner or never do because of fear of being fact-checked or ostracized. Donald Trump basically just throw tantrum, just call names, just throw insults. It is then evident in this case that the United States system, the political system in the United States or of the United States, has become nothing more than name-calling, personal attacks, and winning the next election, and never about the people. And I think to an extent Kamala Harris did echo that. She stated that she is the only one or was the only one talking about policies or plan and that she was the only one or is the only one that is for the people. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is not for the people because he can argue that he is for the people and he often argued that he is the best president in the history of presidency. That is his belief. Of course, many can contest that. However, the system must change. So during the debate, to a greater extent, the host of the debate had it difficult or found it difficult in trying to contain Donald Trump because he kept on interrupting and he often had something to add after his time had ran out and Kamala Harris had spoken. I think it was only once or twice when the, the host both of them allow Kamala Harris to talk, to add, which to an extent it seems unfair. Now, in terms of uh, the debate, foreign policy, okay, Trump did, I think he scored a point when he spoke that he wanted or he wants to end the, the war in Ukraine. If he becomes the president, he is going to end the war in Ukraine and save life. Now, perhaps he may do that because... I think as of now, many had come to the realization that the situation in Ukraine is a loss for the United States. Perhaps Donald Trump and many Republicans will motivate him to end the war in Ukraine, which in this case, I think the Ukrainians are going to be angry. But when it comes to the situation in Gaza, in the Middle East, there is nothing about ending it from Donald Trump or securing the peace, which is fair to both the Palestinians and uh, Israel. In fact, both candidates seem to be in strong support of Israel. Of course, Kamala Harris was the only one who talked about fairness on the side of the Palestinian uh, people. But she basically chose her words correctly. Now, in terms of Ukraine, Trump needs to stop. He is not going to influence Vladimir Putin in any way. He stressed all this nonsense about world leaders being afraid of him, China, is afraid of him. Xi Jinping afraid of him. No, they are not. Putin is not afraid of Trump. China is not afraid of Trump. I think the only countries in the world who are afraid of Trump are poor and weak countries in the global south who cannot defend and protect themselves. Because in this case, Trump can use the might of the United States economically and militarily and also in terms of information warfare against them. However, any established countries and leaders around the world, such as Xi Jinping and China, Vladimir Putin and Russia or Iran, North Korea, they are not afraid of Donald Trump. And in fact, looking at these debates, looking at the way Trump uh, carries himself, the way he talks, honestly, I think Trump is the laughing stock of the world. I think, honestly, leaders are laughing at him. They may not bring it to his face or make it obvious because in international relations, 
whatever you say or do could be on the record and it can backfire against you. In this case, we are talking about saying things or doing things against Donald Trump, a leader who work or acts on impulse, being the leader of the most powerful country in the world with a military arsenal can basically go ballistic on any country, militarily, technologically, domestically, in terms of information warfare and so on, economically against uh, that country. So perhaps they are very careful. But in terms of being afraid of Donald Trump, no country is afraid of Donald Trump. No powerful country that is established. I think he's just talking smack. Now, my friends, the issue of immigration, Kamala Harris did stress that Donald Trump is going to talk about immigration no matter if the topic is about immigration. And Donald Trump did prove her correct. Donald Trump talked so much about immigration, but then it turns out when time came to pass an immigration bill, he basically killed it because of political reason. One thing that people continue to talk about is the fact that he did stress that in uh, Springfield that immigrants were eating cats and dogs and so on. This is basically evident of the disrespect, the misinformation, the disregard, and the manner in which Donald Trump thinks and many people who support him thinks of immigrants, especially immigrants of color. Because what he said about Haitians and other immigrants group who are minority groups eating cats and dogs, he would not dare say that about European immigrants. So that, not only it was uh, disrespectful, it was shameful. And I think that is one of the reason, or reasons why I think world leaders and people around the world are laughing at the United States and Donald Trump because this guy cannot control himself. And this is something that is going to backfire against him and against the United States. But uh, it was a very interesting debate, but I think the debate is evident of the fall of the United States. The United States is in a very dangerous situation, very serious situation, and Donald Trump's personality, the manner in which he carried himself, and the support that he gets from even being racist and being unpredictable and acting on impulse is going to impact the United States in the long run and in the long term. Now, my friends, I'm going to end here. I want to hear what you think, so please tell me what you think. But most importantly, I want to thank you for being a member of the Echoing Voice community, and I want to thank you a lot, my friends, for watching the Echoing Voice. Peace.